Welcome back everyone to Practical Spirituality for Everyday Magic. And if you're watching on YouTube, this is Dinalee TV. I am here uh, back with my friend uh, Amanda Scherzer today. And we are going to talk about uh, Chiron in Aries and childhood trauma and just the sort of overall energetic theme that we're moving into now and what we're going to be going through for the next nine years most of us that are alive right now have never experienced this before because chiron has not been in aries um since uh, well it moved into aries in 1968 so Pay attention, everyone, especially for those of you that were born between 1968 and 1976. And you're really going to have to look at um, your individual chart, which you can get on astro.com um, for just to find out where, well, yeah, you need your birth time to figure out the houses and all of that. Uh, hey, Amanda, welcome back. <laughs> Amanda and I chat on like messenger a lot because she's, you know, like halfway across the country for me. And I'm like, are you feeling this? Have you felt this lately? And blah, blah, blah. And we did that this morning because it was like I'm having all these flashbacks from childhood and Chiron just moved into Aries and that's the wounded healer or maverick in the chart. I mean, there's different interpretations. She was like, Totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm having all of this. You started having on February. We both had head injuries, right before, head and neck injuries, right before um, Aries or Chiron moved into Aries. So in the last degrees of Pisces at the end of the year, she had a, a car accident where someone ran into her and I fell flat on my back, full force and hit my head and neither one of us are fully recovered from that injury but Aries rules the head in astrology the actual the skull the brain all of this and it's kind of like we were trying to figure out like okay what's the message here like what are we not seeing well your eyes are in your head too what are we not seeing what's the message why this re-injury what do we need to pay attention to that we've, we've not been paying attention to and i have had these huge revelations about the the sort of underlying injury or theme of my life like the area of my life that i've struggled with the most which has been uh love and relationships and i have had these memories from all throughout my life just flooding in and um if you are born if you have chiron and aries you you may be experiencing something like this too where you're starting to remember things that you didn't even realize you remembered starting to develop a whole new level of understanding about what basically like the root cause of whatever area of your life you keep banging your head up against the wall with like what is that for you because it's either been in health it's been in love and relationships or it's been in money it's one of those three things because those are the big ones what um and we've been talking about this before i started recording today what do you think do you, you want to share anything about that your yeah i think you know you were talking about love and i was thinking my my thing was also in relationships uh love relationships specifically but mine has been about um connection like not feeling that deep connection i'm i mean you know i'm married i've been married for 13 years and i you know we have a sort of an understanding, we have a commonality and we've got a shared history. So in, in that way, yes, but I've always um, just been seeking this like a deep understanding, like this deep connection, like almost telepathic, empathic sort of connection. And like you say, it, it goes, you know, because of the accident, you know, I had 
I realized it goes back to childhood and it goes all the way back to, you know, being born, coming here and feeling disconnected from, you know, the way from my belief system, I'm, you know, when you, when you get here, you're, you're cut off from all that knowledge that you come from. You're cut off from being able to tap into all that. It's, it's different. It's denser here. And so, you know, just that feeling of, like I was saying earlier, I just, it's terror and it's feeling unsafe and, and it's feeling disconnected. It's the disconnection mostly. I mean, I feel relatively safe in my day to day life. I'm not like agoraphobic or anything, but, but definitely the connection has always been a theme my whole life, just not feeling connected enough to, in my relationships. So. Have you ever felt, uh, did you feel that when you were a child too, like you, maybe you didn't really fit in or you didn't feel like anybody understood you here or. Uh, Even my parents, I just felt like, um, you know, early, early on, I didn't understand why my mother didn't understand what I was feeling. Like it's hard it, when you're a kid, you have to start saying things and you don't have the vocabulary yet to explain it all. Yeah. So I, I remember even when I was two, <laughs> I remember we were decorating the Christmas tree and my mom was about to take a picture and I was wearing this like onesie pajama thing with a, with a flap in the back uh -huh. and I knew it had a hole in it. I think I had a diaper on or something. I mean, I had some on under it, but I remember think telling mom like, no, don't take a picture. There's a hole in my, you know, I was trying to tell her you can't take a picture. And she's like, Oh, it's okay. And I remember thinking she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand what I'm feeling. And I was like two, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's these little revelations that you go back and you're like, Oh wow. I didn't even realize that was the, the base issue of all of this, mm -hmm. you know, this whole theme. Yeah. So yeah, finally you literally whack your head and, <laughs> and then you start figuring it out. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of research, like I was saying on this, you know, what does Chiron mean? And, you know, a lot of the time we hear the term like wounded healer, right? Um, the wound that never heals. Basically it's, it's that unconscious stuff that is driving a lot of your choices in life. You don't even know it's there. It's hidden from you. Um, and with Aries, it's, it's about, you know, the head. Yes. But Aries is the first house. So it's the, I am, you know, Pisces is the last house, the very, this 12th house of the Zodiac. And that is pure spirit. Well, the first house is when you come down into physical form. It's your incarnation of spirit into humanity. And it's your, so it's, I am, I'm here. I'm supposed to be taken care of. I'm a baby. All of my needs should be taken care of um, automatically, intuitively, and all of that. It's also our egos, you know, our, our individual identity and some of our, our personality too. Um, part of our personality, I believe, is, you know, embedded in at the level of our actual soul. But um, to me, it's like if Chiron, it just kind of common sense to me, if Chiron is in the first house in Aries, you know, it may be in a different house in your personal chart, but there was some type of injury to the I am, like the ego, right? Mm -hmm. It could have been in utero for all we know. Like it could have been maybe like my parents fought a lot. You said your parents fought a lot. Maybe it was this, you know, I don't know who I am because I'm worried about my parents right now, you know, and I don't like this noise. And so you become super sensitive to your environment and kind of forget about yourself. Your focus becomes on what's going on around you, sort of treading the uh, emotional waters of home so that, you know, things are more comfortable for you. So don't walk into a... <laughs> A nightmare, you know, yeah, something scary and bad. That's going to make you feel even worse. Yeah. 
So then you learn to become, um, I don't, you know, that you could argue. Um, okay, so did that make you more empathic or were you born empathic? Because you're extremely empathic. You can feel energy. You can feel energy from the solar system. I can feel energy from the solar system. You can feel other people's feelings. I can feel other people. I can feel their sicknesses even in their body. Um, but I think that's just as, as a result of working, you know, hand, hands on with people. For so this time that we're experiencing right now is um, something that uh, Laura Walker of the or Oracle Report is calling the return of the masters. Okay. The return of the masters. Other people are saying things like the return of the healers the return of the spiritual warriors. And um, I was watching when, when you and I started this and I was watching that YouTube video, this guy was doing a, a video on, um, let me see if I can say his name, if he's still on here, because I don't want to quote him without giving you his name. Oh, white light astrology. Okay. I, I've only watched one video of his. I don't know if the other ones are, are good or not, but he actually did some research and discovered that Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth had Chiron and Aries. Okay. Hmm. So now Chiron oh. hangs out in Aries for a long time. Like we're going to be in this for nine years, people. Okay. We, we, this is a major endeavor for us. And wow. yeah. So return of the master healers. And what I have been intuitively getting for the last, I don't even know how long is that, we are beginning the time right now is the return of Christ consciousness. And we talked about it in January, but we didn't go into it. We mentioned it, the, the second coming. And I firmly believe that we are starting the second coming right now. Now, not, not the second coming, like Jesus. The physical the guy is going to come down and start talking to us. Right. right. He's already the, been here. The consciousness descending into all of us. Yes. Yeah. That's what I believe. That That's my interpretation of the event, which is the big buzzword that everybody's talking about, this, this you know, energy wave or whatever. But I, I, do, I believe that whatever, these are, these are the same thing. It's going to come and change our entire consciousness. And I just think, like, if we're already figuring this out, right now at the beginning of this nine years, like how freaking amazing is it going to be at the end of the nine years? I like, I can't wait. This is awesome. There's a lot of stuff that we can do. There's a ton of stuff. I mentioned something on my podcast uh, last time about that. I was working on a project and then I've been really, really obsessed with a couple of particular words um, that I've never really been very attracted to before, but I'm starting to understand how important these words are and I'm not going to say what they are right now, but, um, I'm a, and you are too, I'm pretty sure like a, like a, a science geek, like quantum physics and all of that. Yes, love like, that. Well, I have read a lot of Greg Braden's books and uh watch a ton of his videos i have gaia tv and i, well, I just started the subscription this uh yesterday <laughs> i was binge watching yesterday his um what's the name of his show he has on there i can't i haven't i don't know i was watching missing ancient links. civilizations he was on that missing links oh missing links okay so that's i recommend that to anybody pay the dang ten dollars i think you get the first month free or something for all of you that, that are watching this oh well on amazon i was on amazon prime and it's a seven day free trial i don't know maybe if you go to their site you probably get a better yeah, deal if you go to gaia g-a-i-a dot com i think they'll give you 30 i could be wrong it could be seven or 14 days but i know you get some kind of a you know, trial period, watch missing links, watch, don't you dare watch season two without watching season one first, 
In season one, he starts explaining the cycles of time, like why the real reason why Earth may be heating up and it's going to be temporarily and blah, 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 blah. And I have all these thoughts. But season two is absolutely mind blowing. Um, and has to do with simulations and things like this and the Torah and the hidden message inside the Torah. And when he said that basically there's a hidden message, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. I'm not going to, this is not going to ruin it for you. Okay. But basically <laughs> there, <laughs> I'm starting to jump all around because I get so excited. about. I know. I know. There, so the scientists who decode language and, you know, there's these code breaker people and all this, they basically found a secret language or code embedded within the first so many books of the Torah. I know nothing about Torah. So <clears throat> there, every prediction, everything, every major thing that has ever happened in history is written in the Torah in this code it's all there it's all there every big thing every bad thing every big um every war every scud missile you know launch all of the the um these disasters and talking about big things you know that affect everyone they're all written in this secret code within the torah and then there's one question after every single event, after every one, after they explain what's going to happen, whether it's assassinations or, you know, whatever. The question is, after every event, will you change it? Wow. And when he said that, I just went, <gasps> and just big old tears came to my eyes will you change it and that like hits so deep within my soul like we have to i mean we have to we have to we have to so all this has happened before is kind of what he's alluding to okay so uh -huh. that's all i'm gonna say about it for now <laughs> I want a whole video from <laughs> Nina on this right here. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh my God, but we can, because one of the other things that he's adamant about is that all it takes to change a population is the square root of 1% of that population creating or vibing to or focusing on a particular frequency to change every you know change the population so the square the one per, the square is at the square root of one percent of the population is ten thousand people wow that's not very many that's not very many at all and because uh, the frequency of a positive emotion is so much higher than the frequency of a negative, ugly, warlike, evil, destructive frequency. That, that's why. Because it's so much more powerful. It, it takes fewer people because the quality is so much higher. That reminds me of a dream I had where something happened and I got happy about it in the dream. And then my guides came in and they said, that's so good that you attain this level of positive emotion from where you are right now because we weren't expecting you to be able to do that yet. So. That's interesting because so, so just the positive emotion um, and focus. When is our astrology going to line up so we can focus all this though? That's what I want to know. I don't know anything about astrology, but yeah, we were talking about earlier. It's just like, oh man, we've got all these great thoughts and ideas and things we want to implement. And just, it's just been so hard to get 
in a place where we can focus it all down and actually do it, you know, Mm -hmm. or at least for me, you know, I've got all these great ideas, but actually doing it in a bigger way and not just one-on-one is easy. I mean, I can sit and talk to somebody, but I just feel like we have things to share. We should share bigger somehow. Yeah. Well, it, this is a very mystical time. So what, um, what I, what my idea is, what my project is and what I like to do and we can, you and I can talk about it later. I actually want to start a, um, like a members only portal so that we can, um, sort of come together and focus on some of these things and focus Mm -hmm. on building, you know, what we want and raising the, the Christ consciousness around the world and helping to empower people here because so many people like, I feel like there's, there's a lot of stuff out there, but I don't, there's little pieces of it, like random pieces of it. And I don't feel like anybody's pulling the pieces together into one cohesive, oh, this is what the hell's going on. Yeah. What we can do right now. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because like even in our town, like I met with somebody who wanted to start like a, a speaker series. I mean, she did. She started this speaker series and it's awesome. Um, but I was thinking if only we could pull that together with this speaker series that I know is going on over here and this church, that's not really, it's a sort of a spiritual group and this spiritual group, like why can't, because the same people are sort of bouncing from one to the other, like, but not, but let's pull it all together. Let's have one big, and I wish we had one big space, like. You know, my sister-in-law wants to start a healing, sort of like a healing center um, with all these different disciplines and all these different ways of healing, you know, light worker healing thing. And I think that's awesome. But light workers aren't always known for um, being able to secure the financial <laughs> backing to, to build this, you know, to build this physically. Emotionally, spiritually, we got it. But physically, we need to bring it in. And that is an excellent point because that is another trait of highly sensitive people in impasse is they usually, not always, of course, but it's most of them are not ever able to figure out how to obtain a lot of, you know, abundance in their lives, financial abundance. And that's total BS. And there's a lot of reasons that make a lot of sense why that is. But um, that's total bullcrap because it is so much, life is so much better when you have way more than enough than when you're like a pauper or whatever and you don't feel like you can do what you really want to do in life and things are sort of backwards that way. I mean, I've always, ever since I was a little kid, had this thing with fairness. Like, it's not fair. Me too. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. I'm a good person and they're bad people and I get, you know, and why is my life crap and there's this awesome, you know what I mean? Like, that's the immature mind thinking about that. I totally get that. And, um, but it's, it's taken I mean a long time long 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 time to come come to terms with that but I'm um, putting wealth in in and I'm not saying people not everyone that has wealth is bad I know a lot of people that have an immense amount of wealth and they're some of the most authentic giving lovely people that I know but um, I never met those kind of people until I was, I sort of forced myself to become a business owner and burn the boats, you know, like I had to make it. There was no choice. I had, my husband had split on me and I had, that's, I had to make it, you know, and, um, 
so it's been like a nine year thing, you know, journey to figure all of this out. But that's another thing that I'm really passionate about helping is everyone becoming abundant using these gifts that they have the gifts of empathy, the gift of, you know, I'm not. So. You know. But it's funny what you said about being a business owner, really getting you into that state of accepting abundance and, and stuff for yourself because it's the same, same with me. Yeah. Like I just had to step out and be, you know, you're out there and you have to do it. You don't have a choice. Like, yeah. and that's, that's how you learn. You step out and you do it. And I guess maybe that's, maybe there's a message in there. You know, you got to step out. You can't stay where you're at because yeah. staying where you're at is feeling guilty about receiving and you can't, can't that, that means you don't, that was another issue that came up with me. Um, I, I did a channeling about why is my back killing me all of a sudden? Because normally I think the lower back is supposed to be money issues, mm -hmm. which I don't, I'm not having at the moment. So I'm like, well, it can't be that. It's got to be something else. And I did a channeling and they're like, you are not thinking well of yourself. You are thinking bad thoughts about yourself and you, you're going to feel that in your body because you're doing it to yourself. And I realized, Oh man. So, so now I have to catch myself every time I feel guilty for any tiny reason. Like I should have done the dishes. I should have, you know, helped, I should have sat with my kids and watched them play their video game or whatever they wanted me to do. You know, it could be the dumbest little thing and I'm beating myself up over it yeah. constantly, like all day long. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you can't do that. So it's all about like how you feel about yourself too, whether you think you're worthy of receiving yeah. wealth or love or anything. Yeah. You gotta, did we totally go off topic? Where did Probably. we start? <laughs> it's okay. So Chiron, the Maverick, Chiron, the wounded healer, or so the story behind Chiron is that he is a, a don't call it, centaur. Is it a centaur? Centaur, like half man, half horse type thing, which is also a symbol for some others. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be slightly wrong. Sometimes I get facts slightly mixed up because I've got so much yeah, stuff. Yeah going through my head. Like I think in the last podcast, I said Uranus has to do with money and it's like, no, it doesn't. You dummy. It's Uranus going into Taurus and Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus rules money. So anyway, I get so slightly, you had the basics, you know, right? You just didn't have the specific details. Exactly. It has something to do with money. I just can't think of it right now. So <laughs> talking. anyway, so, um, yeah. Um, and this, this Chiron was a healer. He's like a master healer, right? Think of Jesus, you know, master mm -hmm. healer. Mm -hmm. um, and he was mortally wounded, with, I believe, with the poison arrow or something. And he could not heal himself. Oh. So he could heal everyone but himself. So that's the, the Chiron wound or the unconscious wound. Because if it's in the dark, if it's in the buried in there it's not in your conscious mind well you can't fix it because you can't find it you can't figure out what it is mm -hmm. so the this is what um those of you that have chiron and aries are either have been dealing with maybe for the last few years like you're starting to sort of figure out exactly because everybody's got something i don't care who you are everybody's got issues whether it's self-love you know, no, you, you can't find love in your life or, you know, and basically everything else in your life, health issues and money issues, all stem from that. That That's the foundation is like, do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that you're enough? Do you believe that you're worthy? Do you believe that you can even have an awesome life or deserve an awesome life? Mm -hmm. you know? And if you don't, like almost everybody else, where did this come from? When did it start? And then what choices have you been making your entire life that agree with that unconscious um, belief? Belief, yeah. Yeah, and I figured mine out finally. And it's blowing my mind, and ever since I found it or it was shown to me by going through YouTube videos or whatever. I was telling uh, Amanda 
earlier before I started recording, it's like my whole life, every memory has been flooding back to me. The universe is showing me over and over and over and over and over what this common denominator has been in my life. And, um, and I'm not going to address it right now because I do want to talk about it in an upcoming video. It's a huge topic. I had no idea that it was so pervasive and we empaths, if you consider yourself to be an empath, light worker, healer, um, highly sensitive person, you have been targeted probably your entire life. And we didn't talk about this earlier, Amanda, but <clears throat> it was kind of what I was alluding to this morning. And it's like mm -hmm. many, many, many of you have been all throughout your life victims. And, and I use that word carefully because I don't like what the word victim implies, which is that, um, there's nothing in us to attract that. Okay. Consciously or subconsciously. Um, it's, and that's a whole other topic too, but at some point either all throughout your life or in moments of your life, um, have probably been exposed to, um, what this topic is, um, uh, maybe over and over and over. But I believe that, that um, highly sensitive people and empaths have been targeted their entire lives because of the light that they carry within them. And there is, there's just, just a small percentage of the population that are highly sensitive people or extreme empaths. Mm -hmm. And there's a really small percentage of the population that are the opposite, which are extremely dark, extremely dark uh, people. But they also have a lot of commonality in them and they usually end up uh, finding one another. And it's like, what is, why is this happening? You know, why is the dark attracted to the light and, you know, vice versa. And so there's this, there's a whole course that's ready to come out of me on, on this topic. And I think a lot of empaths have dealt with this, uh, in their relationships, um, over and over and over in their lives. And, for some reason, it's like we can't see it either. Like this is the spot that we're just, it's that blind spot. And you mm -hmm. can never really see what that common denominator has been, you know, throughout life. And, um, but I don't know about you, but in the last, it's probably been building for a year, but more intensely in the last six months. And it's this feeling like, when is it time for me to get what I want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been feeling more of a, more of a drive to just make what I want happen. Yep. Um, whereas I've been before sort of waiting and, and sort of encouraging mm -hmm things around me to make it so that I can get what I want. And now I'm just like, I want what I want and I want it right now. And I'm just starting to, to do things to get, to get that. And I, and there's this restlessness that's been building. Like I can't, like I sit down to do something and I'm like, I don't want to sit down. I want to be active. I want to do, you know, I want to make stuff happen right now, you know? Yeah. So there's some yeah. Mars energy hanging out right now. So making some <laughs> intense, uh, because I can feel it too. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And then I sit down to write something or, or record something and it just goes, boop. Can't do it. Yeah. It's yeah. really weird. It's really, yeah. really weird. I think, I think it's going to take to really pull off what I think that we are going to pull off in the next uh, nine years. I think it's going to take us uh, uh, like, bridging multiple, you know, pulling multiple people together so that we can all 
So I think individually, it's just we're each overwhelmed with so much mystical information, and we all hold a piece to that puzzle. And that's and it's now, now it's going to be the next few years is going to be about pulling all that together and working together as, a, as one big team. Yes. Which is kind of like the opposite of what, I mean, it makes sense because the opposite of what we did when we came in, we were separated. Yeah. And now it's all about bringing it all back together. Yeah. So, yeah. I've thought about that too. Like, <laughs> what if, okay, so, you know, they talk about the Big Bang Theory and, you know, it's basically like so much compact energy, like a black hole, right? Mm -hmm. So the sun, uh, so I was thinking about this earlier, this is how dorky my brain is, but so... <laughs> After a sun dies, it becomes a black hole eventually, right? And mm -hmm. it just starts, you know, sucking in every, all the light. Nothing can escape gas and radiation and all this. And eventually it gets so dense that it explodes again, all right? Mm -hmm. So if you think you could think of God like that, right? Like God was maybe so uh, matter that was so dense pulled in everything mm -hmm. and then you know exploded out into trillions and you know a number bigger than I could ever say because I can't I don't know what comes after a trillion and <laughs> and that's all of us right yeah. That's all of our souls are, you know, and billions and trillions of little pieces and then everything else was created. And so I think eventually we're going to compress again. I think that we're all going to come together and help God sort of remember itself mm -hmm. when we come back. Like, not remember, but remember, like put the pieces right, got back it. together. Yeah. Remember yeah. itself. And then maybe the whole thing will start over again. I don't know. Yeah. Cycles. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. goes in cycles. So, yeah. Yeah. And I was even thinking, like, I'm not one that likes to play in the, um, well, I dabble. I, I mean, I, I find it interesting about aliens and different alien races. And there's, there's a whole culture around like wars in space and, blah, 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 and what's going on with them and how it affects us and blah, blah, blah. But I thought, you know, even on that level, it could be about all the galactic races coming together and all the people on earth coming together and all, all everything, all the galaxies reassembling you know, like coming back to itself, every, everything on every level coming back to yeah. itself. So yeah. And, and the more of us that come together, which was the point, cause I got off track of me saying that about the sun <laughs> was that we're stronger in numbers, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you were given a gift and you are so smart and I was given a gift and I have my own thing. But all of you watching, you have gifts too, okay? Yeah, so and even even if you don't know what your gift is, you you're. I can't even. Everybody on this planet has something that they came in with. It was special and unique to them, and there's a reason why that piece is here. That's why you are here. Yeah. So even if you don't know what your gift is, it doesn't matter. You your life itself and the fact that you're here is your gift to every one of us, every other one of us. So. Yeah, just yeah. your very presence. And, and, and I didn't understand this for a long time. I hired a coach who very patiently explained this to me over and over and over again. <sighs> you emit a particular frequency just being alive, just by choosing to come here and be on the planet you don't have to do anything at all except be yourself. That's all you have to do. You don't 
have to do a darn thing. Now, if you want to do something, <laughs> that's another story. And most of us, I believe, do. But you don't have to. You're doing enough because some of you beat the hell out of yourself. Like beat yourself up all the time that you're not doing enough, right? When you're probably doing more than most people that you know. Okay, even if you're just journaling or, or thinking or writing or whatever. But you don't have to. To, to work super hard to make a difference. Just you now put yourself out into the world. Don't stay a super hermit all the time. Like just going to the grocery store, your frequency affects people mm -hmm. in a way. And some of you notice that other people may turn their head to look at you and they have no idea what they're looking at or what, caused them to look but they looked that's that frequency thing that and have nothing to do with, with what you look like it's something about the energy that gets people's attention mm -hmm. and you'll maybe a lot of you probably noticed that throughout your life like, what are they looking at you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, i always look like my kids always make fun of me and say i look like a bag uh a uh, bag lady or something when I go out in public because I like put on a hat, a big sunglasses, I got sweatpants. Like I'm always trying to hide when I go out in public and it never works. <laughs> I don't know if you do that or not, but I'm like <laughs> incognito. Like nobody look at me. Uh, <laughs> I I can't do that because with my three kids in tow everywhere, it's just like they attract attention. There's no... I guess I don't worry about it because they're, you know, everybody's looking at my kids. I don't worry about myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. When mine were little too, it's just like, we're, I'm just trying to get in and out of the place and everybody's still alive, you know, and right. <laughs> and there hasn't been a knockdown drag out fight about something in there. So I get it. I get it. Well, we are definitely going to talk more about all of this because I think this is going to be an amazing time for, humanity and there are other mystics um and and teachers of mine that have that are you know are have different disciplines different modalities that they use and the prediction is that by the mid 2020s like 2026 2027 that our world is going to be very very different uh, from what it is right now. And I think that the new earth that you're talking about mm -hmm. and what these other people are talking about is not going to be um, because of something outside of us. It's going to be because of us, because right. we decide. And I think that's why nobody, like all the QHHT practitioners, they can't get any clear information and you, you know, you do the hypnosis too of when this is going to happen because it's freaking up to us. Yeah. And I, and I did a hypnosis session recently and the person's higher self said, you know, it's all, it's all divinely orchestrated. It's yeah. all perfectly coming together. So uh, yeah, not a little bright fun. there for you. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to work, though. Sorry. Put my armpit in everybody's face. Nope. That's the wrong way. Okay. That's a little bit better. Well, it's been raining here all day, so there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of light. But anyway. um, Yeah. So I'm excited. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to your big topic that you okay. hinted at. So okay. hurry up and make that video. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to take some time off from my uh, business because my other business, because this really does just take a tremendous, it takes a tremendous amount of focus and concentration. And, and we were saying earlier, Amanda and I, it's, um, and I don't know if this has anything to do with Chiron or just discipline or, or, you know, fascination with so many different topics, but it's so hard uh, from, at least for me, to sit down and write out an organized thing. Um, and part of 
that for me because I know how my soul is designed to manifest is I'm very organic. And so trying to sit down and, and write out this very structured thing, it's, it's like, I'd rather almost lose, you know, have a tooth pulled than do that. You know? It doesn't feel natural. It feels yeah. like you're, you're making up something artificial when you do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. It's hard. It's just hard. I'd rather just get into a flow and just yeah. you know start talking about something. I probably need to have some notes so I can remember what the heck. Just so you can stay, you know, remember everything you wanted to cover. Yes. Make sure you cover it. Exactly. Then if you cover extra stuff, that's just bonus material. Yes, exactly. Um, is there anything you wanted to add to, to this right now? The Chiron and Aries thing? Nope. Just hold on, everybody. Everybody's getting real frustrated and really tired, but I really, really, really think that everybody can still feel that there is big change going on right now, and it, it's for the better. It's, you know, and, mm -hmm. and try to keep in mind that when something traumatic or bad does happen to you, ask yourself, if I created this from my higher self if my higher self me as my higher self said set this up set this event up to happen why would i have done that like what positive reason could come out of it I always try to look at a positive because yeah. it's so much better than than going this sucks this bad thing happened and this bad because i could sit here and list off like a hundred things in the past two years that sucked yeah but but I can also list like what I learned from everything and how my life has changed in better ways because of all that stuff. So always, even though stuff might feel really intense and I know it has, um, and bad stuff happens, just hang on. We are, we are morphing and creating something with all this. There's mm -hmm. a reason for all this. And, and, uh, the outcome is just going to be more amazing than you can possibly possibly imagine so mm -hmm. I believe hang that. on I believe that and I believe that the science can back it up too I believe yeah. that it's not just a woo woo no thing. one of these days the everyone who thinks that we're the spiritual people and the empaths and light workers and healers are crazy they're gonna find out that we were right all along and that we're actually yeah. geniuses yeah. Well, I mean, there's so much stuff already that people didn't understand that they thought was, couldn't be possible, but now they know why it's possible. So yeah. I mean, science is always behind. You yeah. Know, it's always behind. It's always trying to prove something that we already know exists or is true or whatever, because we're intuitive. You know? Right. But anyway, okay. Any of you would like to schedule a session with Amanda, she is at timetravelhypnosis.com. You can schedule a past life regression or a life in between life session if you want to help understand uh, more about what you plan for your lifetime or if you have, I don't know, fears, phobias. What do a lot of people come to you for? Just I mean, any questions you've ever had, any questions you have now about your life, any questions you want answered. You can ask about stuff that happened 20 years ago. Why was I in that car wreck 20 years ago? What was the purpose of that? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Anything. Okay. So help with life. And then, of course, you, if you want to book a session with me where we do an Akashic record reading and discover like your particular soul's energetic makeup, the, your frequencies, your soul's vibration rate, what your gifts are, what the theme was for your life in this incarnation. And something that I've started to add is where you are on the empathic scale. And um, because each, so, and this isn't like a, oh, this one's better than this one or this one's worse right. or any of that. It's just like, what, where are you and what are the particular challenges of this, you know, range? Like, because I understand what a lot of what those challenges <laughs> what you need to do with them and how to avoid the pitfalls, how to avoid falling in the pitfalls. Um, and you can find that information 
on www.dinahleewoodall.com. There's a couple of different options on there for a personal reading, or then I also have the option for a 30 minute business consultation. If you're having trouble with your business, something's not working, and you want to realign your business to wealth and prosperity, you can choose that and we'll have a 30 minute consultation. Just chit chat and see if it's something that I'm able to help you with. And I think that's all. All right, guys, we're out for now. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you, Amanda, for being here today with me. And Always we will, fun. Yes. <laughs> and we will see you all soon. And hopefully the next time we see you, we're going to have a big major announcement. So bye-bye.